Genji in Overwatch 2 Season 9 is in quite an interesting spot right now in the current state of the game and in today's video I want to talk about everything that's good about him and how you should be playing him right now in Season 9. Genji for me is by far my most played character in my catalog. This is just my main account. I'm not even accounting for all my Smurf accounts or my playtime on Xbox where I got top 500 many years ago. I am currently right now in this season about a Masters 3, Masters 2 player, which basically is almost like GM 2 and 3, which is what most people kind of refer to it as now. I've seen many pro players just kind of be sitting around like Masters 2, Masters 1 in this current state of the game was season 9, so it definitely is pretty interesting and I've learned a lot this season in terms of how to play him, both by experience and just learning from my mistakes, and that's kind of something that you're going to have to get used to with this character in general, is you need to be honest with yourself about the mistakes you're making and how you need to play the game. When I transitioned from Xbox to PC, I got placed in Masters actually, and I've been around a Masters to high diamond player pretty much ever since I got onto PC. My support role also got to GM, and recently, in the last couple of seasons, I've actually managed to hit GM on Genji pretty much. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, I wouldn't say I'm as good as somebody like Necros or any of the pro players that are actually top 500. Granted, in this season, I am a little bit close to top 500. I think it's like around Masters 2, Masters 1, which uh, is top 500 currently right now. And I just need like 10 more wins to get that. So I am kind of floating around there, but I am well aware there are a lot better players in the game than me. So let's talk about when you should be playing Genji in Season 9. Now, this is something I've actually learned the past couple of seasons when I hit GM, because when you get to that rank, it's just like the game is completely different. And I got humbled uh, when I went 5 and 10 against Kefri and Yidle and Super. So I kind of had to learn some things about the game um, that, you know, Masters and Diamond did not teach me until I got to GM. But Genji is very, very map-reliant in the current state of the game. It's not like Tracer, pretty much, where you can pick Tracer almost literally any map and win the game, pretty much. Genji used to be like that, I would argue, like, back in the day, but now it's very, very map-reliant. And with how oppressive hitscans are right now in the state of the game, it's just tough to even get on top of them and get value as Genji, right? Typically, they're going to poke you down before you can even get to them, and you, like, you might even die, perhaps. Or even when you get on top of somebody who might be pocketed as a hitscan, it's a little tough to win. However, with the new DPS passive, you can be maybe like a soldier or an Ash that's pocketed if you hit your shots and you position well. Good maps for Genji are ones that have a lot of flank routes and a lot of height to them. So we're talking about maps like, you know, maybe the Zhang Tower, you know, maybe Ilios, maybe even Dorado. Dorado's okay. Maps where he's not good are maps like Havana. Circuit Royale is a little bit tough to play him on, but you could make it work. Basically, the way I like to think of it is the maps that have a lot of like power positions on high ground. If there's not a way for you to easily access that high ground, it's going to be a bad Genji map, right? So... Think of first point on Havana, right? When you're attacking, it's kind of hard to get on that high ground all the way in the back. However, think on Ilios Lighthouse when you can just kind of walk around the right and climb up to the high ground and contest the head scan, right? That's pretty good and beneficial to Genji. So it's really just the little things like that is if you can get around and access the high ground to put yourself in the favor of winning a duel or one on one, right? Can you do that on Genji, yes or no? And that kind of depicts if you should pick him or not. Can you make Genji work on Havana or, you know, a bad map? Yeah, probably. If you're really good and the other people are really bad, you could pretty much do anything. You will be fighting an uphill battle if you choose to play him that way. For example, again, like I said, when I got absolutely destroyed by Kefri on Havana, I, you know, practiced a lot of hit scan on that map, and now I've been playing a lot better on Havana playing hit scan. Now let's talk about the compositions you should play Genji into. Now, Genji's really good against hit scan in general, and hit scan is kind of part of the meta. And like I said, if you are a good player, you can pretty much finesse and outskill almost anybody. 
but again, it depends on the map quite a bit. But a lot of comps that Genji are good against are just basically anything that you can deflect back, right? So think of like an Ana, you know, a Zen maybe, a Bap, a Soldier, an Ash, right? If you can deflect all their stuff and they can't really get through your deflect, he's a good pick there. You always want to be thinking about the enemy's team composition and the map and the point you're on and if Genji is going to be good into that or not. So for example, right, if you are a Genji one trick and you're on a Havana and the enemy team is playing like Winston, you know, uh, Symmetra, Echo, I don't know, man, maybe like Lucio, I don't know, like Kiri or something, Kiri, Moira, something like that, man. Probably not gonna be that good, right? Not really a good map for him because of how open it is and you can't really deflect any of the stuff they have. But yeah, in the DPS pool, I like to play Genji into, you know, something that has like a soldier, maybe a Widowmaker, Sojourn is okay. Uh, honestly, Reaper is kind of a neutral matchup, I would say. Hanzo's pretty free as well. Ash could be a bit tough if it's a good Ash player. Uh, Dynamite, Coach Gun, and you know, if they have really good aim, it can be tough. Bastion used to be kind of free. I would say Bastion is a little tough now because of how tanky he is. And then Echo, I like to stay away from. And Cassidy is a bit of like a 50-50. It depends on the hinder. And obviously Mei and Farah and Symmetra and Torb are just bad because, you know, uh, turrets, they can get around your deflect typically and they're kind of hard to kill. Another point I want to bring up is going to be cool downs. Now, this is something, again, I've had to learn a lot playing at the higher ranks. You can't really just go in and kill everybody like you used to back in the day on Genji. You have to be a lot more tactical with how you engage in fights and stuff like that, and your angles. Your angles are very important on this character, taking off angles and, you know, contesting and being a threat, right? Even if you feel like you're not being a threat, simply just having people worried about you is value. But yeah, you can't just go in anymore and like 1v6 blade because you have to worry about, you know, like Moira Fade, Life Grip, maybe a Beat, maybe a Transcendent, maybe a TP from Kiriko or Suzu. Typically what you want to do is wait out all of the cooldowns or at least most of them and know which ones are available and play around them. In general, I would say a good tip for Blade in Season 9 is just try and get cooldowns out by the enemy. Even if it's just like Immortality and you get one kill, that's still value, you know? I don't think Genji's the, you know, the solo carry he used to be. Even Nanoblade got a little nerfed because you can't like one-shot combo people anymore. Granted, you can swing a lot faster with the blade, so you can like chop down tanks and stuff like that now, which is kind of fun. But I would say generally just try and get cooldowns out with blade if you can, and try and get one, maybe two kills, and get out with your life. And never ever start a fight with blade. Even starting a fight with nano blade, like yeah, it could work, but it's so risky. So I've had to learn to be a bit more patient with blade and. Uh, in general, especially at higher elo lobbies, I like to wait out cooldowns and only blade if I'm on top of them, right? Because if you're trying to dash up and go to them or dash into them, you can get like coach gun by Ash or stuff like that or beam down and die before you hit the ground with blade, which is something I see uh, a lot of Genjis mess up and including myself, I, you know, happens to me a lot in the hitscan meta where you just dash up your blade and you die when you hit the ground after one swing. I guess what I'm really saying is you kind of have to respect people's aim right now with how oppressive hitscan is in the meta and you have to be very careful and mindful of cooldowns and try and get them out and you know don't think you're a literal god with blade anymore because that's not really the case with the current state of the character. That used to be the case back in the day but not anymore. Can you get team kills with like a blade or nano blade? Yeah but it's very, very difficult to do, and you have to be uh, very smart and methodical with how you play it now. In general, I would really like to see Genji get a couple of buffs. I know that a lot of people, you know, hate Genji and stuff like that, especially if you're a support main, and I understand your frustration. I actually main Ana. I think his shurikens being only like 28 and the melee being 40 now is kind of silly. Maybe they can make the, I don't know, the projectile speed a bit quicker. I do think indirectly the season 9 meta has been good for Genji because of the DPS passive and, you know, 
just him being, you know, hard to hit and stuff like that with more health is a plus and you can dash through the entire team and proc the dps passive which is cool i just really wish he was a bit better of a pick and it's just he feels so niche now i guess and i feel like the skill to reward ratio is just not really there you know you have to put in way more work on genji compared to a soldier or a soldier who can just you know use a disruptor and spray a choke and get value. But yeah, I hope this video helped you guys out with Genji in season nine. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and a sub, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching and take care.